one of us. Instead of an end, it can be a new beginning. The 67-year-old man stood on the curb as he watched his life's work burn up in December. The year was 1914. Adding insult to injury, his property was only insured for $238,000, far less than the $2 million worth of damage. His 24-year-old son, Charles, said, My heart ached for him. He was 67 years old, no longer a young man, and everything was going up in flames. When Charles found his father, he was surprised by his dad's request. He said, go find your mother and bring her here. She will never see anything like this as long as she lives. The next morning, the old man gathered his employees at the charred ruins and said the following. There is great value in disaster. All our mistakes are burned up. Thank God we can start anew. Three weeks later, Thomas Edison delivered his first phonograph. Disaster and disappointment, simply put, can destroy us or it can refine us. The choice is ours to make. Joseph was sensitive to God's will. Disappointment helped him to seek, to find, to know, and to live the will of God. And if we maintain our sensitivity to God's will, just the way Joseph did, then whatever disappointment comes our way, it can be a stepping stone to something much, much greater. Instead of an end, it can be a new beginning. Now let me conclude. I'm sure we all know people who have allowed disappointment to cause them to be bitter. There may be some here this morning listening to me preach this sermon. And your disappointment that's that has taken place, has caused you to be bitter. Has caused you to be bothered. Your disappointment has so overwhelmed you that you're just mad. I'm sure that that's a possibility. But on the authority of God's Word, it doesn't have to be that way. Not if we meet disappointment with the attitude that Joseph had. How is that? We must meet disappointment with mercy, with patience, and a willingness to do what? To submit to God's will. There is nothing that ever happens to any of us that is a surprise to God. God is either directly responsible for what happens to us, or God is permissible. God permits it to happen to us. We cannot be responsible for what happens to us in light of this, but we can be responsible for how we respond to it. So when disappointment comes, and it will for you and me, are we going to be merciful? Are we going to be patient? Are we going to be sensitive to the will of God? I believe this is God's plan. That God wants us to be like Joseph. And to understand that if we're going to make it through, if we're going to live through the disappointment, we have to understand these truths. Disappointment can make us bitter or it can make us better. I love the rest of the Christmas story in Matthew. All this took place, verse 22, 
to fulfill what the Lord said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. Joseph woke up and he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and he took Mary home with his wife. And they gave him the name Jesus. This name Jesus is why we're here. This Jesus is why I stand here. This Jesus is why these children were singing. It's a wonderful life if you have Jesus in your life. Why do we gather together every Sunday? Because of Jesus. There is no reason for you and me to be here if it wasn't for what Jesus did. You see, 2,000 years ago, He came into this world. He took on flesh, and He was born in Bethlehem. The angels sang praises. The shepherds were the first evangelists to tell the good news. The wise men, the magi, they brought gifts. Mary was the mother. Joseph was the earthly father. Mary rocked him as a baby, fed him as a baby. Mary did all that a mother was supposed to do. She took care of him. Joseph, he did all that a father was supposed to do. Taught him a trade. He became a carpenter. He was good with his hands. He was able to build things and make things. Mary and Joseph watched him grow up. They knew he was special. They watched him as he matured. Somewhere along the way, Joseph died. But mom kept her eye on her son. She watched him go to an old rugged cross. Mary watched him die. She watched and she listened to people ridicule him. Pluck his beard. Drive nails into his hands. And she watched him hang on the cross for three days. She wept when he took him down. Put him in a barred tomb. But Mary knew. She knew in her heart that he was special. She went to the tomb. Guess what? Stone was rolled away. An angel sitting there said, Why are you here? For the one that you came trying to find, he's not here. Listen, greatest words. He's not here, for he has risen. 